Um, so the project I'm going to talk to you about today is the Collingwood Yards project. It's located um, south of Johnson Street, uh, uh, north of Perry Street in the area sort of outlined here. We won a design competition about seven years ago now to turn what was then a really derelict complex of buildings into a home for creative businesses, artists, art galleries, radio stations, so really diverse mix of functions. Um, here's an axonometric um, taken in the early 20th century. Um, it's really three main buildings. Um, Circus Oz occupies the rear portion of the site here. Um, the main Johnson Street facade was designed by uh, Percy Everett uh, and his um, public works department. Uh, and one of the key features of it was this large garage door here, which I'll um, refer to in a moment as well. It was one of the very first concrete structure buildings in Melbourne. Uh, that's something we discovered as we were sort of digging through the history of the site. Before we started, we did, we actually commissioned a photo essay. So this wasn't just a sort of lapidation report, but we also wanted to capture the character, the sort of feel, the atmosphere of the spaces as well, because we really felt that there were some qualities to the spaces that were beyond just sort of surfaces and finishes that we wanted to capture going forward. Now, one of the big challenges was how do we take this very closed complex of buildings and turn it into a truly public uh, set of spaces? How do we invite the public in? Because one of the key things we wanted to do was to actually not just contain the creative industries, but create an interface between the public and the creative industries. So it's a, this is an important example of Dudok modern architecture. This is the main entry here. It seemed like the main entrance, the obvious entrance for the precinct, but actually on an analysis, we realized that, you know, this says a lot of wonderful things, but it doesn't say welcome to everybody. So we actually took a different approach with the main entrance. And that was using the original garage entry as a precedent. We were able to convince Heritage Victoria and local council to allow us to introduce a new opening here on the right-hand side. And that new opening completely unlocked the project because it allowed us to access the central courtyard on grade and also provide universal access through. And it also allowed us to make a contemporary opening, an opening that was stripped of a lot of those sort of signifiers of that sort of Judoc modern um, uh, entrance and it's much more sort of open and welcoming. If we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted, I can show you around the site. Um, I'll tell you the story of these golden columns, uh, which I don't have time for in the next couple of minutes. Um, so an axonometric view and really showing how that new connection through here really unlocked that central courtyard. Um, on the heritage facade, um, and look, the whole precinct has got a statement of significance and the Johnson Street building also has an individual significance. We looked as well at not wanting to suppose to sort of strip the building right back too much. We wanted to work as much as possible with the existing fabric. So um, here's the before shot for the windows and then really what we managed to do afterwards. We were able to work with the sustainability consultants and the building surveyors in order for us to be able to maintain all the existing windows on the Johnson Street facade with some minor upgrades. Uh, an axonometric of the existing, a big challenge was this landlocked courtyard in the middle, uh, that connection through from Johnson Street, but then we created a new little mini arcade through the back. There was a dead end laneway. I'll take you on that journey now. Uh, and we did a lot of restoration works on this rear Perry Street building as well, which was built in 1913. So what we did here is took two windows and cut them down to the ground. The temptation often is to put a big black steel loop around these new cuts. We didn't want to do that. Throughout the whole project, we wanted to make clear where we've made interventions. So we left those little remnants of the um, where the sills were. Um, and also when we cut the, the openings through to the courtyard, we've made those openings very apparent as well. So that if you've got a keen eye, which I'm sure all of you have, you'll see that that this was originally a window, and that's the way we've taken the approach with all these new interventions. Um, new shop front windows we put in to make this a sort of public arcade and then access through into the courtyard uh, as well. Existing view of the back of the buildings, and then what we ended up doing. Now, this is a really important point. To get these old buildings up to code, we've put the new lifts and staircases on the outside of the building. That allowed us to leave the existing buildings pretty intact. We didn't want to mess around too much with them. So these new stairs and lifts 
we wanted them also to be interesting, beautiful sculptural objects. Um, so we wanted them to contrast, and we also wanted to be placed against the building to not completely strip away the kind of story the building was telling. Because, for example, this is an existing view. There used to be an assembly hall uh, attached to here. So with the proposed, we left a lot of the remnants. We didn't. A lovely mural you see in behind the staircase was actually a temporary mural that happened during um, before the construction process, and we decided to keep that because we really love sort of layers um, and storytelling at all. So these new lift objects that we put against the building were done in a new color of brickwork, but we actually laid it with the same pattern. Of, uh, the way it was laid was the same sort of pattern. So there's that kind of linking between the two. Another existing view and then the proposed. So this is the third of these lift sort of elements. And this really unlocked the circulation into these buildings because we wanted the public not just to traverse the ground plane, but actually up through the building as well. And these are used as sort of elements uh, for uh, contemporary um, art as well. So, you know, projections onto them as well. Existing views of the upper level uh, walkways on the Perry Street building. We wanted as well the public to come up through here. So we removed those windows on the right hand side, really opened it right up. And actually our historical analysis showed that this had originally been an external corridor, then it had been closed in then we opened it up again. So it allows these beautiful views out to the trees as well. And little ephemeral moments like this golden glass in the original uh, building. We actually use that golden glass to denote all the new windows and openings we put in. So all the new windows and openings have got an element of this golden glass. We also wanted to make sure that the, the interventions we made on a large scale were very obvious, like the lifts and the new opening. But as we went down through the scales, and if we're fortunate enough to be sure this, I can show you this on site, we wanted to blur the boundary between what was old and new, and also leaving layers, not just the beautiful things, but the sort of ugly things as well. Um, and it's been really interesting how that golden glass has been used by the tenants as well. So okay. this, thanks very much. So I'll whip through these. So this is really before and after shots. So what we did is we did some restoration to floors, but we also wanted to leave evidence of sort of old openings and even old cracks where we'd sort of patch them as well. We left little remnants of sort of the old um, technical school and we found this beautiful blackboard on site that miraculously survived. See, there's a subject list from 1986. We just put a clear finish on this and put it up on the wall. Um, we also did a lot of sampling of colors and all the sort of layers. Um, and we went back through photographs of the school. So for example, we reinstated the blue floor and we did a lot of this kind of work. So you'll see on site all the new colors of all the new spaces were sampled from existing colors on the site and perhaps just used in a different and interesting way. Um, and look, what I haven't been able to convey is that this is a thriving community of artists and it's been really embraced by the public. Um, and the feedback we've had and also the experiences we've had in it, it has been a successful precinct uh, and it certainly has integrated nicely into the neighborhood. Thank you very much.